Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a fantastic weekend and have been able to enjoy the sunshine in some shape or form, whether that be in your garden or whether you've travelled out a little bit more into your local green area to get a bit of fresh air and to join a little bit, enjoy a little bit of nature, a bit of what's around us. Um, firstly, I have to name and shame this guy behind me who seems to be digging a hole. He's got into the habit of digging holes um, around the fence line, which is a bit of a concern. So, uh, I may have to stop to, to make sure there's no escapees throughout this video. Um, but I know um, about plants in the morning. I have to hold my hands up and admit I'm expert on plants at all. So I thought today we could talk a bit about the UK's largest land predator. And I've got a couple of skulls to show you as well. So this is a badger skull. Now the really cool thing about badger skulls, I think, is that their sutures close. You can see how small smooth this skull is. In comparison, you've got a fox skull. So, the fox skull suit is say quite open. And you can see in comparison with the badger, the badger is entirely smooth. Um, so it's not always like this. So about at about one year old is when these sutures close up. So as they mature, um, they kind of fuse together a lot more. And there's a very specific reason for this. That's so that the skull can remain incredibly strong. Now, there's not many predators of badgers in the UK. However, in the 16th century, of course, there were wolves. And uh, 1,500 years ago, there were bears. So it's really important that they had a really strong protective skull. And um, of course, elsewhere in Europe, Eurasian badgers are really, really widespread. They can be found on the Iberian Peninsula and um, all the way over to Russia. So they will come into contact with wolves and bears potentially then as well. So it's really important, strong skull. Another characteristic of the badger is this. This is the sagittal crest. Now this is really important because it enables them to have a really strong bite force. So they've got this really cool that attaches here, loops all the way around under this orbital arch here. This is where its eye would be and it would attach onto this piece of skull here. I'm not entirely sure what the name of that is. If you do know, put it in the comments because I'd love to figure it out. Um, so this muscle sets all the way around and it enables them to have a really strong bite. Now, with badgers, they are really opportunistic feeders. They'll feed on whatever they can sniff out. Um, but predominantly, 80% of their food source is earthworms. Now, they can go out in the night. They're nocturnal animals. They feed at night. Um, and they can scavenge hundreds of these earthworms. Um, so, interestingly, you can see the teeth here. Because they are such opportunistic feeders, and they'll feed on whatever they can find, they've got really interesting dentition. They've obviously got these canines here which are used for gripping and um, they will feed on small mammals things like rats and mice if they need to if there's not a lot of earthworms available but they'll also have a lot of fruits that they'll dig up they're really strong diggers they've got these amazing claws of course so they, they dig up their set their set so it's really important they they're very strong in that way too um but they've got these really enlarged if you can see properly it's all it's not too blurry enlarged molars are really useful for eating these earthworms um, but actually it's a bit of a story this one unfortunately because the highest mortality rate in badgers is actually caused because they are eating these earthworms covered in dirt and now dirt after time acts as if it's sandpaper so it grinds down these into badger skull have a look at its teeth because you might realize actually the reason why it died was because it has grind down its molars so much that it's unable to feed properly. Um, so that's a common cause of death in badgers. Um, it's at this time of year, if, you, if you're around a set, that you might actually find some skulls. Of course, it's the, these animals have just gone through potentially a, a tough winter. Um, so you can find a lot of skulls lying around in spring, which is really cool. So keep your eyes peeled for those if you're out walking in your local woodland. Um, and it's a great time, of course, to go and see badger sets if you can. Um, they're brilliant animals because you can just go and sit when it gets dark, sit at dusk time. Obviously, keep a respectable distance and try not to disturb the animals or their sets at this time um, because, you know, they'll, they'll be breeding right now. So um, what you need to do is go and sit strong sense of smell. You can see that. Look how big that nose cavity is. They've got a really strong sense of smell. That's how they, you know, find. So make sure that you sit downwind of these sets. Maybe just sit, find a quiet spot and just watch them. There's nothing better than a bit of badger watching. Um, they've got quite small small eyes have got monochromatic vision you can see these eyes here this is where they would be so monochromatic vision means that they can't see necessarily in color and they're really attracted to things to a set and um, make sure that you stay very very keep a good distance as well um so i'd really recommend 
recommend getting out there at this time. I hope you're all staying safe and are, um, are looking out for one another and being kind. Um, it's really important we can kind of go out into nature, picking up some, uh, some lavender there. Um, go out into nature, not just spend time with it, but really connect with it. Have a look at what's around birdsong. Um, science has shown that time in nature is important, but it's actually how we stop and listen and connect with it that's the most important thing. Um, so which brings me on to skull of the day. Um, so Chris couldn't be here today, but he's, uh, he's, he's off at a wildlife hospital helping out, lending a helping hand there. But he's asked me to... Um, give you skull of the day so make sure that you uh, get your answers in pretty quick so this is this I love this animal so this is a UK species you'll find it in the UK have a good look and twist it around a little bit I'm sure some of you have probably got a pretty good idea of what this might be um, and we will come back this afternoon at six o'clock to give you the answer to this um, and give you a little bit of um oh, can only apologize not poodles <laughs> um uh, and, and give you a little bit of facts and cool stuff about this, this bird here. So um, send in your answers. You can comment and like and everything and share this around because it's great uh, to see your comments and stuff coming in. Um, so with that, I hope you guys have a great day. You know, get out and do something. If you can, in your local area, spend a bit of time outdoors, do something a little bit creative. I think I might take these dogs out and then um, do some painting or something, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, that's all from me. Hope you have a great day and we'll speak to you later.